In the Gospel reading today, we hear about the foolish virgins who have not enough oil for their lamps. They have to go out and buy some. You look at the parable and the way the Lord presents it, and the whole thing is rather ridiculous. It's midnight when the bridegroom comes, and the wise virgins say to the foolish ones, you better go and buy some for yourselves. Well, I have my doubts that the store is open at midnight. But anyway, story goes, they went off and bought some oil someplace. And by the time they got back, of course, the bridegroom is in and the wedding feast has begun. And then they knock on the door and he says, I tell you, I do not know you. Now, if we put that into modern situation, these would have been the bridesmaids. Do we really think he didn't know who they were? These were the close friends of the bride. Some of them may have even been the sister to the groom. And so it's not a matter that he didn't know who they were. Obviously he did. They were in his wedding. They were the attendants at his wedding. He knew who they were. But there is a whole other aspect then to this. As the Lord is giving us these instructions, he's telling us that there is a different kind of relationship that happens. That while he might know who you are or we might know who one another are on the natural level, the question has to do with the spiritual level. Do we truly know the Lord? How many of us can go through the motions day after day after day and yet, if we were really pressed, we would have to admit, I don't really know Jesus. Then you ask yourself, does he know you? He knows who you are, obviously. He created you. He loves you. He knows who you are. And being God, he knows you perfectly. He knows you better than you know yourself. And yet at the same time with that said, we have to then ask the question in a relational way. If you don't know him, does he know you? How can he? If you have not allowed him in, even though he knows you better than you know yourself on that objective level, in the relational way, if we have not let him in, he will look at us and say, I don't know you. In other words, let's put this another way. For the foolish virgins, they had enough for what they thought would be able to get them to the, to the wedding. That was all they were concerned about, to have the absolute minimum necessary then it had, didn't happen quite the way that they thought it was going to. And they missed out. Just as I've often said, don't aim for the bottom rung of purgatory. Don't aim for the lowest possible spot in heaven. Yes, if we barely eke it in, praise God, we got there. Don't aim for that. If that's what you're aiming for and you miss, you're toast for the rest of eternity just like the foolish virgins. And so if we're doing the absolute minimum, then we can look at it from a different perspective. If we're doing the absolute minimum, the question is, who are we really doing this for? Me. I am going to do the absolute minimum amount possible so that I can get what I want. Kind of a rotten way of looking at things, isn't it? As I like to point out, ask yourself, if you went to a wedding, as long as that's what the Lord is talking about here, and the bride and the groom said, I will love you as little as I can possibly get away with for the rest of my life. The minimum possible so that I don't have to sleep on the couch the minimum possible so that it's tolerable to live in the same house, the minimum possible so that I can do whatever I want 
and I really don't care about what you want. It's all backwards. Because on the day that a couple gets married, while both know that they are going to receive an immense amount, that's not the question of what they're going to receive. The question is what they are giving. The focus should be on the spouse, not the self. Well, Jesus is the bridegroom of our soul. How much are we giving him? Think again about a marriage vow. The couple gives themselves 100%. Now, it may be that in many marriages that's not the way it's lived, but that's actually what they vow. There's no conditions. There's nothing held back. They've given themselves away as a gift to the other person. Isn't that what happened when we were baptized? How are we living it? Are we living it for ourselves or are we living it for him? If we're living it for ourselves, then we're going to do the absolute minimum possible for him. I'll go through the motions. I'll do the least I can, that I have to do as long as I can still get to heaven. Or like the stupid bumper sticker says, how much can I get away with and still get to heaven? What a horrible disposition to have. It's all about me. If it's about God, then I want this vase to be filled to overflowing with oil. It doesn't matter what time the bridegroom comes because it's not about me, I don't care. I want this for him, I want the best for him, I want to do everything for him. If I have the highest spot in heaven or the lowest spot in heaven, I don't care. I just want to be with him because I love him. Not because it'll be nicer for me than being in hell. Yeah, it will, but that's not the point. The point is we're doing it for him. So it comes back again to the relationship. Do we know him? He's the bridegroom of our soul. Do we have a relationship with him? If we don't have a relationship with him, then obviously he doesn't have a relationship with us. And then we will pound on the door and say, hey, let me in. I'm not just one of the attendants, I'm supposed to be the bride. And he's gonna way open the door and say, I tell you, I don't know you. I don't have a relationship with you. You've never, you've never tried to develop a relationship with me. That's the point. We need to develop that relationship. We need to have that union with the Lord. We need to be loving him. It's not doing for ourselves so that we can get away with something. It's doing it for him out of love then it doesn't matter to us how much it costs. It doesn't matter to, what, to, to, to us what it's going to require because it's not about us. It's about him. So if we want him to open the door and be able to say, my beloved for whom I have been waiting and seeking, then we need to be his beloved for whom he is indeed seeking. That implies we have to be seeking him that's what the Song of Songs is all about. The bride looking for her beloved, seeking him. He's seeking us, but he's waiting for us to open up. So if we want him to open the door for us, let's open the door for him first. Open the door of the heart and let him in and be able to recognize who he is to know him so that on the day when we stand before him and beat on the door, he will not say, I do not know you. Because in fact, we love him so much that he will open the door wide and in total love for us, will bring us in to the wedding feast that will last forever.